All right, welcome back everyone. We're going to get started. We're going to jump right into our last session of the day and close out with a bang. So I hope you all had a great last break and we're going to close out the day of the Board of Directors workshop series with our third session, Renewal, Decolonizing Communication to Shape Authentic Brand Identity. And again, um, here's a look at the agenda for today's this third session. Um, we will end promptly at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Pacific, and then we will adjourn for the day. So now we would like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Sarah Williams, Director of Communications, um, Events and Community Engagement. Um, please welcome Sarah by placing a heart emoji in the chat box or using the heart reaction on your screen. Can you all hear me now? <laughs> Okay, awesome. So um, just to do so, a couple of housekeeping as well, um, we're going to be elevating the Indigenous and Native voices as our priority. We're going to um, have Native staff, uh, we, we, all, we have Native staff that contributed to this content. Um, please turn on your video if you are able to do so and um, stay muted until you're ready to speak. And again, what to expect in this session is um, we, um, we're going to do a speaker introduction. So I, we introduced Sarah, we already checked that box off, but we'll have Sarah do a little bit more background on herself and um, we'll have an interactive warm-up activity and we'll cover three main topics and we'll have a discussion at the end using chat and voice so Sarah let us take it away <laughs> hello Mike check can you hear me yeah thumbs up let me see if we don't have any video joiners I get it I feel like this was a very chat heavy um, session today um, yeah so a little bit about myself um, before I get into that I just really want to say that Okay, now we're recording again. Um, I want to say that I've been joining in today with each session. I know you guys have had some really great speakers. I'm confident that you'll leave here with the tools you need to succeed. Um, I heard strategic planning and front loading a number of times. That's just plain good for you. So no matter what you're doing, strategic planning, stopping, focusing on the thing instead of juggling all the other things. Um, that's going to just be better for you in the long run. It's going to save you backtracking. Um, so no matter the topic, uh, communications included, um, highly suggest strategic planning and front loading. So yeah, uh, I'm Sarah Williams. I'm the director of communications, events, and community engagement here at NACUI. Um, I'll be discussing best practices for building a brand, connecting to your audience, and decolonizing your communications. So um, yeah, first and foremost, we, we are all about elevating Native voices. So keep in mind, although I'm non-Native myself, we did have Native staff contribute to this. Um, so they made sure that it was going to apply for everything that you guys see in your daily. Um, I've got over 10 years of the communications experience myself. Um, I started out in small business marketing, um, grew to corporate business management, gov and then government practices. Um, and then I was done with the government and I went into nonprofits. So um, I've planned large festivals and smaller uh, special events. So everything from a 40,000 person Christmas festival to a small fishing clinic, I've done it all. Um, and I am focused on inclusivity. I have been focused on inclusivity um, and representation in marketing events and community engagement along the way. Um, you don't see CFEA very often, uh, but that is my certification with the International Festivals and Events Association. So I was in uh, the good company of mentors that planned the Olympics, planned the Super Bowl, um, you know, all kinds of things. So very fortunate to have um, been taught by some really great people. Next slide, please. So we are going to do a warm up chat. Um, I know we're at the end of the day, but I still want to know you guys are there. Um, so I know we have Justine working the slides and Cebu watching chat. So tell us what city you're in without actually telling us what city you're in. So in the chat, name a unique fact or description of the city you're working from without using the actual name. And we'll see if we can kind of figure it out. Uh, for example, if someone was working from LA, they might say this city is known for famous people and terrible traffic. So we'll just do kind of a two minute speed round. Um, I'm, I'll drop mine in there too, and we'll see if we can figure it out. Ah, uh, Motor City, yeah. My small town is next to a Hopi village. Great. The Wire. The Wire. Do I need to say it like that? The best snow and worst air quality. Oh no, Chase. Is that Colorado or is that Motor City? Here's mine. 
Oh, here's mine. Okay, great. Anyone else can famous county in California? Furniture city or beer city, one or the other. I feel like you fall in one of those two categories if you visit. Great. I don't know if that's everybody, but we would love to, to hear from you. Thank you so much. Um, that's helpful. So I'm just going to check one more time before we get into it. Is, in, is anyone feeling like getting on video? I would love to see your smiling faces, but I get it if you're tired. I also get that. Burnout is very real in the virtual space. Um, yeah, so, okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, so why does communication matter? Brenda's driving in a car. T thank you for not turning your video on Brenda. Um, ultimately, communication matters because the way we represent ourselves to our audience will decide our future, right? We have all these big plans. We do the strategic planning. We do the policies. But if who we're serving or who we're trying to reach isn't being served or isn't being reached, um, we can't hit our goals. And so communication is key in that. So based on how we communicate, does our local community trust us? Does our audience want to follow us and hear our stories? Do representatives want to advocate for us? And do funders want to support us? I know we had some good funder talk at the beginning of the day. Um, so think holistically and strategically, there it is again, from the beginning to ensure consistent messaging. So that will build your credibility. Why would someone be with you? Why would someone take their time out of their day and focus on what you and what you've got going on? So um, that's what consistency does for you. So next slide, please. So we'll talk about brand identity here for just a second. So you've heard brands, you've seen brands, you know, you're bombarded with information in today's technology world. Um, but what is a brand? So it can be broken down by its own acronym. Um, B is for a blueprint. A brand is a master plan of your audience experience. So it needs to be delivered consistently across all areas of your organization to help build trust and loyalty in your brand. The R is for relationship. A brand is the thoughts, feelings, psychological relationship between an organization and an audience. A is for agreement. A brand is a promise of what the audience will experience from your organization. Um, N is for nature. A brand is the inherent nature of your organization. So it's personality, it's character, it's style. It's the emotional piece and association to your brand. And then D is distinctive. So branding makes your organization stand out from the crowd. It is the unique identity of your organization. And the crowd doesn't even need to be other UIOs, right? Because we are already serving our own communities in a certain way. It can just be letting people know you're there, being distinct, again, in the chaos of all the messaging that's being thrown at your potential audience. This can help you cut through a little bit. Um, Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so we are at a brand identity activity chat. Um, Brenda, only chat if you're at a red light. Um, so in chat, tell us a challenge that you're experiencing in building your brand. So who you are, what you're about, who you serve. Um, it could be around perception, your audience. You're trying to get to know your audience. You don't know how, um, design. Maybe you're having trouble finding representative images. Um, let's talk about that in chat. We'll do a five minute activity. Um, so between 420 and 425. Um, and then I just wanna see kind of what, what are you guys bumping up against when it comes to um, your branding and trying to establish who you are to your community. And then one of these challenges will be chosen and we'll all come together and brainstorm here in a few minutes um, and help solve a problem for somebody together. Yeah, Evie, forever changing population served. So for an example, a transient patient population. How do you reach out to your audience if your audience is always changing? Is there a game plan that we can make around that? What else?
I'm not that speaker to move on, by the way. I'm going to make you guys talk to me. <laughs> if we, this is for you. This is your space. Um, so we'll, we'll hang out here till 425. Think about how you're trying to reach your, your audience. Maybe your audience is funders. You know, how are you trying to get that money? Are you, who are you talking to? How are you networking? Do you not know where to start? Is it creating a newsletter to try to keep people engaged? Is it social media? Do you have social media? Do you have five social media? What's something that we can help you work through? Maybe it's not you in particular. Maybe someone on your staff is, is in charge of something and they're having trouble. We got two more minutes. Or is your problem or challenge that branding is kind of an afterthought? I got to get these patients through the door. I got to get staff. I got to get these grant documents filled out. Is that the challenge? Is that we, we don't have the time or staff or space or brain power at the end of the day to even think about this? No judgment. If you're there, you're there. Yeah, George says not well known by funders. I think that's pretty common. That's that's a common challenge. A few more seconds. I'm gonna give everyone a shot to think and translate to your little typers. All right. Thank you guys. We'll pull from that and then come back to it in a bit. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so getting to know your audience. Um, if your brand is who you are, then your audience is who you're talking to, right? So it could be clients, it could be patients, um, the staff at your organizations, it could be peers um, or federal agencies. And all of those are gonna warrant a different method of communication. Um, it can be a little complex, but once you get it all lined out in that front loading, um, then it's a lot easier to communicate because people don't feel like they're receiving communications that don't apply to them. So the more special you make an audience feel, the more likely they are going to continue to engage with you. Um, so how do you know who they are and what they like, right? Data, 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 datum, however you want to say it, just find it and make sure that you take the time to assess it, even if it's a quick glance, even if it's you know, a 30 minute report analysis once a week, something to make sure that you look at hard data and figure out, oh, this is actually because your perceived audience may not be your actual audience, right? You need to kind of cross reference how you think and feel versus what the numbers say. So social media dashboards are a really good way to do that. That's how we do most of our um, kind of behind the scenes data and analysis here. Um, is we have business accounts on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and, and Facebook. We also have YouTube. Um, and at least once a week, we do have a staff person dedicated to reading those, although most of us kind of take a peek every now and then anyway. Um, but the business accounts are really helpful. They're often free. Um, I, I haven't, there's add-ins you can pay for, but it's mostly free. So it's a matter of just digging, digging in there. Um, if you're not sure how to do it, YouTube is a great resource for anything. YouTube is owned by Google. So if, I mean, just think of it as a video Google. Um, also doing surveys. So just asking your audience how they feel, who they are, maybe some high level demographic information, zip code, kind of see maybe people who are closer to you aren't as engaged as people that are further out that might grab you on social. So there's a few different ways to approach it. SurveyMonkey does have free options. So surveymonkey.com. Um, and they have really good reporting too. That's easy to download and share with a team um, or your other board. Um, yeah, and then environmental scans too. So I kind of picture an environmental scan as you kind of walking in a room of everyone talking to each other and your people watching. 
right? It's, it's a way for you to see what's being said. This is the soft data. This is the data that can't, you can't put a number to it. It's qualitative, um, but it is something that's super useful because you can read body language. Um, you can hear tone. You can kind of watch a conversation, how it's going as people post back and forth. Um, and so that's going to be really, really vital to kind of stay ahead of a narrative um, that maybe you don't want it heading that direction. So maybe you comment on the post and say, hey, I'd love to talk to you offline about this or something like that. So that's just scanning your environment, seeing how things are actually happening versus how you think they're happening. Um, all right, next slide. Oh, wait, hold on. Just kidding. Um, a couple of examples of this is um, recently um, a member of our, actually, yeah, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. It's more custom. Okay, here's connecting to your audience. So um, consider culture. So regional cultures and pockets of people are gonna look and feel and interact a little differently than an entire national audience, right? So regionally, you're gonna have people that actually physically interact with one another. They go to events together. They have the same representatives that they can share their opinions on, you know, all of these things versus a national audience where you have to do kind of a broad stroke. So depending on who you're talking to, and I think funders would fall under this national audience category because they aren't necessarily right on your back door. You have to reach out to national funders from time to time, philanthropist type, federal agency type. Um, and so consider what kind of culture you're speaking to um, and then adjust accordingly. So it can hurt or it can help depending on, you know, if you share a very specific um, regional thing, whether it's the climate or, you know, an animal or something like that, that's really, um, you know, let's just say Pacific Northwest. Um, and you're sharing with an audience that is national, someone in Florida probably won't get it. And they'll just be like, what? That's cool, I guess, you know? And then, um, so that may hurt you a little bit because they feel, they don't feel seen, they don't feel heard. They just feel like they got spammed. But um, if you are in a situation where your audience, the people on your mailing list or people following your page are only in a 50 mile radius of you, by all means, uh, you know, talk about that local restaurant that has the best tacos or talk about, you know, something to relate to them in their daily. And so they're like, oh, they are real people. Oh, I can reach them. I can, I can approach them. Um, and so that's really helpful. And then using relevant words and phrasing. So adapt your linguistics to the audience. Um, you know, there's, as in, with any demographics, there's varying levels of education, varying levels of, um, you know, work experience, uh, life experience. So again, get to know your audience, um, use native language where it's appropriate. Um, I know that that just warms the heart of anyone who it comes across um, and connect emotionally. Um, because if, if we can't reach people's emotions, um, we are gonna get lost in the mix. And it is, the, the mix is getting bigger and bigger and crazier and crazier with all these algorithms and fake news and all, all the stuff that's bombarding everybody. So if you can make someone feel something, if you can make them feel relieved or, you know, like they're making a difference or an action item that they can make a difference, um, you know, that's, that's special. So now a couple of examples of this um, is recently a member of our staff had a family member um, that received a letter from their local urban Indian organization. Um, and this letter actually included a poem in the language of a local tribe. Um, and that was really meaningful. That was like, oh, they get me. Um, so this relevant and specific connection made it far more likely to be saved from the trash can because we know how we do mail, right? It's just, do I have to pay this? Yes or no? Okay, cool. I'm throwing it away. Um, but this does more though, right? Because you it makes them want to share with friends or family. And what does that do for your name? What does that do for your brand? Their friend or family is going to be a trusted source. And so when they see your name on this letter, like, oh, those people must care. Those people must have taken the time to find out who, or they either know the local language or they found someone who did. Um, 
and they made this a really special engagement piece. So that's one example. Another example is the graphic we have on screen here. Um, and depending on how big your screen is, you might not be able to see it, but it is a young native girl attending a telehealth session for um, behavioral health. So it's a therapy session. This was created by our own um, in-house artist. And on the back, um, so it's like we're seeing her screen behind her, right? Like that's what she's looking at. Um, and he included the Shawnee language um, asking, how are you today? So just the presence of native language paired visually with a native patient tells our audience, we see you, we hear you. Um, and again, it just is that quick glance to stop the scroll, right? That's what we want to do. People are scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, wait, what's this? That looks like me. That looks like my daughter. That she's got a computer, must not be an old thing. So um, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind is connecting, making emotional connections are really going to bring you that pull through you're looking for. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So let's do a a brand identity challenge activity. So this is where we'll take five minutes um, to discuss, this is our group help. Um, so we might be able to address one or both depending on um, our answers. So Sabu, in chat, we had a couple of challenges we were looking to, to solve. I think George had one and Evie had one. So let's take a minute and talk about George's, right? Yeah, not well known by funders, forever changing. Okay, so let's talk about not well known by funders for a second. Um, I'm gonna lean on our audience. Um, how do you guys become known by funders? How do you reach out to them? How do you introduce yourself? Um, what's kind of that first step to make that connection with funders? And we'll pause there for a second. Phone. All right, thanks, Latoya. So are you when you do the phone, are you just like Googling them and then calling them? Or do you get that connection from someone that might have known them? Because I'm, I'm a fan of a cold call. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you can, you can chat too. I mean, you can come off mute and chat. Both. Okay, cool. Latoya's not afraid of the cold call either. <laughs> Gotta get that money. Any other ways to get in front of funders? Become known to them. George, would you feel comfortable cold calling or is that a barrier for you? Yeah, networking with the same group of people is good. So what are we, if we're cold calling, what are we do? What are we Googling? Are we just, are we looking up like, what, what terms are we putting in to look for funders to reach out to if, if we don't have a network of the same group of people? Or are we reaching out to our, our current network and saying, hey, does anyone have any funders? Are we doing that? Sabu just dropped a whole document, you guys. There's some ways. Love that. Searching for grants. Awesome. Okay. So George, are you satisfied with that? Does that get you going in the right direction?
Great, awesome. So let's look at the other one. Um, I know Evie said the changing population. Do you guys experience a transient patient population as well? Or is that kind of regionally to where Evie is? Do we do like, do we know? Do we know if it's a changing population or is it just by who we see coming in and out of our clinics? Do we take surveys of our patients? I think let's ask that. Let's ask like, do we have any, any means to survey patients on a regular basis? Or who, who are we talking to most? Are we talking to our staff? Is that who's getting the most emails? Are we trying to reach people, the general public and bring them in? Or are we all in George's boat trying to get money? Okay, well, our time is up. I'm glad we got to problem solve one. Think on the other one, drop it in the chat if you have any kind of afterthoughts on that. Um, next slide, please. So decolonizing your communications. Um, one of the biggest things that I got from Native staff in this feedback was review your items before sharing them on. So if, if something lands in your lap and it's, let's just say a government update from a federal agency, um, it's not going to speak softly to your audience, right? It's, it's generally going to be very formal, very cold. Um, it might use language that opposes, um, you know, urban versus tribal. It's just, it's not the best thing to just kind of cold share. It does take a little bit of time, but sharing it in your own voice is going to be vital. Um, it's going to, it's going to land a little better. It's going to be more likely to be read. Um, when it doesn't feel like it's coming from someone who's very distant, um, you are a trusted source in your community. So being able to, uh, and this, this goes for anything, uh, the government stuff was just an example, but anything from an outside org that isn't you, you know, kind of review it before it goes out, make sure that um, it aligns with what you're doing. Um, and then another thought is use symbols with a purpose. So I know we know the meaning behind medicine wheel and turquoise, but they're very, they're sacred and symbolic meanings. And so they deserve to be shared as such. Um, so in your communications, in your promo, think, is there a reason why we're using this symbol or is there another one that's maybe more relevant to the task at hand? I know sometimes we can just save logos or save pictures on our desktop and include it in everything. Um, but when seen in the same space too often, sometimes our audience can kind of go blind to them um, and it doesn't, it loses that deeper meaning that it could have. So ultimately we want our design to, again, evoke emotion, have connection sparked. Um, so the intentional use of symbols can do this. So try to connect your visual communications with your content. So let's just say you're promoting a vaccine clinic, a medicine wheel would be great for that. Um, and I have seen in the COVID-19 era, um, UIOs are, are actually serving um, you know, people outside of the native community as well. And so it's an opportunity to share your culture with them um, and be able to say, hey, this medicine wheel means this, and this is why. So um, creating that deeper meaning and, um, you know, not just using it as another design, but an opportunity to share your culture, I think is important. Um, next slide, please. Um, represent your audience and your marketing. Um, we are very, very blessed and fortunate to have our artist on team here. I know not everyone has graphic design artists, um, but that's something that we've been very intentional at doing. Um, I know you guys, I know the struggle of trying to find um, any type of representation um, anywhere. <laughs> like 
any native faces, anything, um, any stock photos. That's the word I was looking for. I was playing around it. Um, stock photos um, or videos of native faces. There's not that many. Um, and so that's why we have chosen to illustrate often. Um, but we're, once we get past COVID again, um, NICUI really does have a goal of creating a library for you guys. Um, so you can have access to those representative media. Um, because again, I know, I know the challenge in communications. Um, so when you can um, take photos at your events, um, make sure that they're high quality photos, that they're not blurry or that they're not too noisy. Um, but, you know, the more photos of your community that you have, the better they'll connect because they'll see their friend or they'll see their, their you know, onto your uncle, you know. So that's going to be really helpful in connecting. Um, visually honor the culture and design as well. Um, there's, there's all types of, um, you know, symbolism in what we do too. So it's really helpful in making that connection. Um, next slide, please. So some practical takeaways um, that you'll get in a follow-up email from our team are the 10 do's and don'ts of native focused communications. Um, and really that's coming from a communications through a native lens. Um, because, I mean, you guys know how to speak to your communities. I think it's just a matter of getting systems and processes in place. Um, and so with that, we'll also provide a template for a newsletter for you. Um, that's something that I think the more things that you can create a template and not have to reinvent the wheel, start a new doc every time, templates are your best friend. Um, and also best practices um, along with it. So if there's a new person that comes on the team and they haven't done a newsletter before, if you have steps, you know, A through Z for them to do, um, it's much, much easier from that point on. Um, now I do recommend MailChimp. MailChimp is really good for newsletters. They have a great free option, again, with more templates that fit your brand. Um, and then also um, before I wrap up, um, these that you've seen kind of framed in this, this deep green, these illustrations um, are part of our core value monthly art pieces. So once a month, our, our in-house artist um, creates these incredible art, these art pieces. Um, they represent who we are, what we believe is important. Um, and it's a different theme based on the month. So the one on the right was themed graduation, the one on the left, a celebration. Um, and these can be found on our social media pages. Um, and it's just, I'm really proud of our team. I'm really proud of the work that we do. And um, I just think these are really beautiful and representing uh, who we serve. So any final thoughts? That's, that's all I've got for you guys. Any questions? And if everyone's ready to start. I have a week. question. Oh, have yeah, question. Brenda. Now, what do we do? Okay, because, you know, we had a very difficult board of directors and they chase a lot of our, a, a lot of our clients, a lot of our patients away. Mm -hmm. Now we want to get them back. But I don't know, you know, we don't, I don't have any ideas how to get them back, to be honest. So how long ago was this that you had kind of a, well, it's been going on for the past year. I was gonna say, is it ongoing? Well, nope, nope, nope. They all resign now. They resign now, so that's a good thing. Okay, good. Uh, well, I think, I think once it gets to that point, it's hard. Um, it's hard to to undo damage that's done, right? So I think um, building relationships and again making that emotional connection, showing the the value of the services that you guys do and showing your character and personality through the interactions of day to day. Um, I think you've got to create an environment um, and a brand um, that they don't want to leave um, and they that they won't equate challenging individuals to your brand or to who you are. Um, so there might be, I don't know, maybe letter, I don't know your capacity, but maybe letters, individual letters sent to them um, with something that may connect and land well. And again, show the difference between individuals and your organization as a whole. Is that helpful? 
It is, thank you. And you know, we we're also kind of throwing around the idea of maybe changing the name of our um, health services because right now it's American Indian Health Services of Chicago. So mm -hmm. we were kind of thinking of maybe change it to uh, First Nations just to, you know, have a clear, a clear start. Hey, you if, know, you've, if you've got a, if you've got the capacity, a rebrand is a beautiful thing. Sometimes it's a nice, fresh start. You bring in a new, a new audience, um, and your old audience might not know it's you. So they will be new too. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to add Brenda, just from, uh, working with other organizations that, um, I know that had similar struggles uh, that weren't uh, native, but they were part of marginalized communities and had similar struggles. Um, it's always good to have people who are connected to those to those members, right? Like that have good status, that have good relations, and let those folks. Uh, in the case that I'm talking about, I knew the director who. Um, had the same issue with the board of directors chasing people away from their organization. And so then she went uh, to make sure that she reached out to those community members, had um, community engagement uh, spaces to let them know that at the end of the day, you're here, to, she was here to support them and not uh, the board. And the board eventually did have to resign similarly. So I just want to let you know, like, maybe identifying champions that have that good relation within the org to do that outreach. All right, yeah. thank you so much. You're welcome. Good stuff, thanks Brenda. Anything else, any other thoughts, communications focused? I know we kind of skimmed along our way here that we couldn't do a deep dive into too much. And if that's all we got, I'll toss it back to Divya. Thank awesome. you guys. Thank you so much, Sarah. That was an amazing presentation. And I love seeing all the artwork that, um, you know, our in-house staff has created and, you know, provided for us to, to share. So thank you so much for sharing that with us again. Um, so thank you again, for everyone, for joining us for Renewal, Decol Decolonizing Communication to Shape Authentic Brand Identity. We hope you enjoyed this session. And we also thank, again, our awesome speaker, Sarah. So let's show our appreciation with a celebration reaction or a celebration emoji in the chat. I'm definitely celebrating because we had this is awesome and I, and I love everyone's participation in this for sure. Um, we appreciate any feedback that you would like to provide about your webinar experience today. Um, so Sabu will be posting the link to our survey in the chat. Um, so please complete uh, the webinar survey after you have complete, you have com uh, successfully completed all three sessions in day one of your board of director series workshop. So congratulations to you all. <laughs> um, Again, we, we, we definitely appreciate any feedback you would like to provide. And we also have some upcoming events um, that we would love for you to join in on. So again, we have next Friday, October 15th, uh, the Board of Directors Workshops Part 2, um, which is including retreat of ceremony, the self-assessment, and entering and working in the longhouse. So we'll have great presenters that will come and um, assist you all in learning some more about these topics. And then we also have charting your course, navigating funding streams to support your health programs part two and three of the series, which is applying indigenous data collection and evaluations to increase behavioral health grant funding and Cedar Branch strategic planning for community advisory boards, which uh, will fall on November 3rd and 16th from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we'll give you a few minutes to um, complete your evaluation now. Um, you can do so or, or you can do so afterwards as well, but we would love to give you back a few minutes of your day. I know it's a Friday as well, so definitely we want to get back home and, and, you know, just kind of get into the R&R &R for the rest of the weekend. Um, but again, we just want to thank you so much for joining us today for day one of the Board of Directors workshops. And we hope you enjoyed today's sessions, which are culture, indigenous approach to writing grants to private funders, Organize, preparing your organization soil for an operational policy harvest, renewal, decolonizing communication to shape authentic brand identity. And we look forward to seeing you all again at day two on Friday, October 15th. So have a wonderful rest of your Friday and a great, great weekend. And please feel free to ask, ask any more questions in the chat if you do have them.
Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Yes, thank you, Latoya. Thank you. It was very informative. Oh, we're glad you enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to the next one. Yes, thank it's you. it's gonna be great. We're excited to we're excited to bring this to you for sure. <laughs> thank you, Kyle.